Hi, everybody. Before you enjoy another terrific interview, please do me a favor. If you're watching us or you're listening to us, please help us out by subscribing. We would really appreciate it. Now enjoy that interview. Go on there. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm really excited today. I've got actor Asher Grodman with me. So welcome, Asher. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I had to stop us because we we were like into a 10 minute yeah, we were into rant. This. And I was like, we we should probably get on and start. But recording. it's also like your background is just an endless conversation starter. So yeah. See, I, I mean, like the uh I, I like the uh, shark, you know, from Jaws. I just noticed the yeah, shark's great. Right? The Pacino one is just wonderful. Yeah. In yeah, my opinion, sense. you have the wrong Batman, but aside from that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Which Batman would you put in there? For me, Michael Keaton. Oh, yeah, me too. Batman. Me too. He was Batman. And, and the rest were great. Everyone's great. Yeah. But Michael Keaton was Batman. I, th I think most people agree with that. You think so? I mean, I don't know. You, you've got an Adam West contingent, <laughs> I think, you know. <laughs> but between those two. I, uh, I got really, like, lucky beyond... Um, my uh, uh, abilities and I got to direct a short film that ended up being uh, one of the last things that um, Eli Wallach did before he passed away. Yeah. And he had this like incredible career and, and good, the bad and the ugly and Godfather movies oh, and, and all these things. And, he, and there he was at like 96, 98 years old when we shot this thing. And he was like, to this day, the most fan mail I ever got was the one episode that I did of the Adam West Batman series. So there is a contingency there and they are oh, diehard because yeah. he was like, I did all this stuff. That's what, I mean, that's, that's, a, what that's a fan going. group. Yeah. We, uh, we got to see him um, at a convention probably a year before he passed away. And, and I mean, he was engaging. He took, I mean, his line was out the door, but he took time with every single person. I mean, he was the best. Yeah. He that's how he was. And I was like, I had never directed anything before. I was terrified. And I was like, this guy was like, he had, he had been around. He was Marlon Brando's landlord. Like, that's how long he had been around. Hilarious. And he had, you know, been in the ring with all these heavy hitters and, and was such a pro. And I was like, oh, God, what a, you know, <laughs> I'm way how out of my depth. How did you hook up with him? Um, well, I had this, I had this idea for this short film that I really wanted to make. And, and years prior, I knew I was in an acting class um, with his daughter, actually. We were both in the class yeah. together. And she was an incredible um, actor, um, Roberta. And, uh, and then we hadn't spoken in a while. And, and, and I, I had done an audition around that time. And she saw it. And I, I got a text from her, like, out of the blue. Or a call from her, I think, out of the blue. Um, and she was like, oh, I saw that audition you did. I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And I said, listen, I, I, I'd be, I'm so sorry, but I'd be crazy if I didn't ask you this because I can't cast this role. And I'd gotten to the point that I was, I was out in Queens asking, because it was based on a true story, asking if the real guy who was a Holocaust survivor would play himself. And, like, that didn't make sense. And so I'm driving back, like, in despair, and Roberta calls me. I'm like, I, listen, I have this thing, and I thought of your father when I wrote it. And all, would you, would you um, consider <laughs> sending it to him? And I think she said no. But um, uh, but then a few weeks later, I, I got a call um, from this um, elderly gentleman with a, uh, a bit of an accent, and and uh, and, I, and it was it was Eli Wallach, and he said, "When are we doing this thing?" And and the rest is history. I mean, but that's amazing. It was amazing. And when he showed up on set, it was the same thing you're describing. He was telling stories left and right. It was like ev like everyone's like he just put everyone at ease and everyone was captivated by him. And he had this thing where like, you feel even on camera, like you felt every thought that he was having like red on his face. He was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's certain people that they, they just kind of command the room. Yeah. When they're in the room. And yeah. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those. What an amazing phone call though. It was, it was because in the beginning I thought he was, he was kind of like, because the the character um, was French and spent some time in Belgium, and he was kind of doing like that accent, and it didn't quite yeah. give me his name at the top, so he was kind of like auditioning, the, not audition, not auditioning at all, but like was kind of like playing with me before yeah. there was a reveal of who it was, and I, 
I, I went on a ride with that thing. And I, and there was someone in the room when I got a phone call and I was like bouncing off the walls. I was trying to play it cool. Um, I just failed. screwed that up. <laughs> I could I not have played that cool. Up, but you know, he, he took pity on me and, and still did the film. I'd have been the guy that was going, yeah, good. That's, sure you are. Yeah, good sure. Job. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. I think part of me thought I was being messed with, but on the off chance that they're telling the truth, I, I let that, I, I believed him. Yeah, but he was, yeah, he was amazing. amazing. I'll, I'll tell you a real quick story. Please tell Please. me all the so, stories. So this is this is my you know, brush with with somebody I think is kind of similar to to that. I've done exactly one thing of acting in my life. One. Right. So it was on a little um, audio drama. So 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 it was just audio. I didn't have to, but but uh -huh. we did it by Zoom. Uh -huh. so they and i was just playing myself so so you think i wouldn't screw that up but you know so they're like it was opposite an older gentleman was the scene and so they i i get on the zoom and they're like we found somebody for the older gentleman he wants to go ahead and read with you and i thought well okay that that might help me because i'm not an actor so maybe that'll help me so i was like okay well then popping on the screen ed asner Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So funny story. Um, when I, uh, there was a film festival in Long Island when the Eli Wally film was going around. Um, well, for, well, we were kind of on the film festival circuit, this little short at the same time that Ed had like six short films that he was taking around the country. So Ed was like everywhere. And I got to meet him a couple of times and it was one festival that I couldn't go to. And I, and I had been told that we were going to win, um, an award at this festival, but I couldn't go. Right. And so I, I sent my mom because I thought that'd be a cool thing for That's her to awesome. go. She didn't know that we were going to win and that she was going to have to get up and accept an <laughs> award. So I just kind of like, I just thought it'd be fun for her to do that. And Ed was the one who was like hosting and and uh, wow. and giving out the award. And so my mom just spent the whole evening with Ed Asner and he was like the loveliest dude, cracking jokes. Um, and uh, he took care of my mom. So uh, it was a warm terrific. spot for Ed Asner. Yeah. Yeah, we since he's come through our town a few different times after after that doing his uh, or he was doing his plays, you know, his little one man plays, and we we got to spend time with him, you know, that way. And he's terrific. I mean, it's just like it's just like American? hanging out with your granddad. What's that? Are you by the Contemporary American uh, Theater no, Festival? Is that no, 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 no. We're 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 in this little town just outside of uh, the capital, Charleston, in West Virginia, okay. St. Albans. But he. He came for two or three years in a row, and it's just a tiny little, you know, local theater, but there he was. So what was his connection to the town? Well, I think what happened was, so uh, my, uh, my wife's on the board, okay. and they saw that he was traveling around and just sent a note saying, hey, we got a little theater, and, and he showed up. Jesus, that is amazing. I know. I, I just... I, the people like that that just it's it's that much more of a loss i think when they're gone yeah yeah because you get those stories of like how you know the, the, yeah it's a big yeah a lot of fun memories with, oh a lot of fun memories. so yeah. do, is your is your short film is it out there somewhere where you can watch it is it out there? That's a very good question. Um, I've kind of lost track. It might be, other, I know the trailer and stuff is out there. I may just need to, at this point, put it on, on YouTube because it was kind of bouncing around to different like uh, film festivals. You need to get that out there. I would love to watch it. I do it. need to get it out there. It, you know, it was, it was really hard for me because we shot it and then it took me a long time to finish it. And I, and I to be honest with you, I, I, I part of me didn't want to finish it because I, I was at a point where like, if I released it now, it was going to be like this weird, like, Thing that was going to come out like after he had passed and yeah, right and it's kind of awkward with it made me feel so uncomfortable and then uh it was actually my best my oldest friends i just spoke to the other day who was like um you have to release this film because yeah. he was literally on set telling stories left and right like he loved having an audience yeah like this guy wouldn't want and and he's amazing in the film uh so yeah you gotta, you gotta release that I did, will, I know, did you I get to have a gunfight <laughs> no no i did but i will here's a fun story though so we had him um the other big mistake that i made in the film uh which i learned a lot from um was i was in it too which i, I don't recommend uh anyone do 
But what happened- That's a lot of ended, hats. It's a lot of hats, too many hats. Uh, but uh, what ended up happening was I had Eli for like a day and a half. And so we shot all of Eli's stuff. And, uh, and it's all like takes place around this, um, around this little table. And uh, so we shot all of Eli's stuff and then Eli had to go. And I, I took care of the other actor who's, who was in it and shot all of her stuff. And then the, well, all that was left was the stuff of me in it. And a lot of the shots had to be dirty, which means we need to get a little bit of Eli here just for orientation and then, um, and then it's mostly a shot of me. So we had to go on a search for a, a body double who looked <laughs> like Eli. And we went on this search and found a guy who my father knew, who uh, was a pharmacist and a teacher in Newark. He was, he was 92 or three years old at the time. His name was Sidney Sperber, sweet guy. <laughs> he had nine fingers, which is just great. Um, and, uh, and there was, and, and the trade was, if, if you do this movie, I will arrange it so you can meet Eli Wallach. And Very so, he was like, yeah, I'll do it. He shows up and, and within like seconds, the two of them are talking about like how many body parts they have that they weren't born with. Like, oh, well, this isn't really my hip and this isn't really my thing. Um, these two old Jewish men. And, uh, but the best part of the story is Sydney sat down. He had never shot a film before. He didn't know what was, what was going on. Yeah. And as we started going and I started talking and saying my lines, he would respond and be like, you, what are you talking? You gotta, you can't talk. We gotta, we gotta shoot. We can't, he didn't, he didn't understand that this is it happening. And he would talk the whole time and eventually he fell asleep oh, as we were shooting. <laughs> and the entire, my entire performance in the film is me talking to sleeping Sydney as my mother is offline reading, uh, off camera reading the lines. Uh, so then that's, you know. I mean, that's it's a great always, <laughs> The independent films, you never know how, you just do what you gotta do. You gotta get that out there. I know, I know. I kind of feel like the stories of, of the making of the film are almost better than the film, yeah, so. Those are hilarious. You should yeah. do a documentary just on the making <laughs> of the uh, short film. <laughs> That sounds like the most like self-important thing. Like, here's a documentary that I made of the making of my short film. <laughs> oh, that's a great way for everyone to turn off the TV immediately. <laughs> you need to. Well, you got to do it, but you got to do it. No, no apologies. No apologies. Yeah, take it really it. seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I'm trying to get someone like very serious to interview it. We'll have like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd you say, need, I'd say and you side. just tell people, you know, millions of you have been contacting me wanting to yeah. make just more. So now I've done a document. Popular demands. I have taken time out of my schedule to make this film. That's right. <laughs> so, so we are, so we are talking off camera. Yeah. I, I've, I'm caught up on ghosts. Right love it we were just talking about that the uh my wife and i mm -hmm. about how there's we're we're running out of comedies especially network comedies they're mean, just okay, not, yeah yeah they're not coming out with that many anymore so we're looking you know we're looking trying to find good ones ghosts thank I, you so much love it i love it i i i know you got to finish the first season i hope we're going to get a second season because it's i hope so too i mean i'm I, I, today has been like a whirlwind because i woke up this morning to the news that we're the number one new show on television well, that's, you should be that's it's crazy. really good i know but like that's very sweet thank you but like for it to actually happen is like <laughs> what like i could i could do this you know <laughs> act being an actor is impossible in in so many ways and then actually being an actor and like getting a show is impossible and then actually being an actor getting a show that you you're on and you love is impossible and then getting a show that you love and that other people love is crazy like this stuff doesn't happen and and we're all just blown away by it um i so, I, th I love the fact that it's i listen if if you're going to be the number one show, unless they say it's the number one show that was released on a Tuesday in December, you know, something like that, then you can be excited. I think that's, yeah. that's true. But well, I love yeah, the I, way as a, as a cast, you know, yeah. it's kind of this ensemble cast and yeah. everybody gets their, their little moments yeah. within the episodes. You know, it, it does a really good job kind of spreading the love a little bit. 
they do a great job. And look, the, the cast is amazing. And the people I work with are, I mean, I, I would be gladly quarantined for an extended period of time with these people <laughs> as I already have been. And I hope to be for many more years. Um, our writers are also amazing. Yeah. And when I first read the pilot of this, and I've, you know, I've been doing this for a while and you read a lot, you go to get to like pilot season, you read these new shows and, um, and in a pilot, you're setting up, you're creating a world and also giving a sense of like where you're going. Right. So usually you read a pilot and you're like, oh, okay, you're going to do this and then you're going to do this and you're going to do this. And I see what you're up to. When I read this thing, it was the first time that I read a thing and I was like, they, they could do anything. Like th there's infinite possibilities here. They could go in any direction they want. And I've even after we've, so this is going to be the finale will be the 18th episode. And even after 18 episodes, or even after 17 episodes, I'm still re reading every single new script. Like I, I did not see that coming. I had no clue. Like that makes perfect sense that we're doing that, but didn't see it coming. Are we getting more ghosts? Are you getting more ghosts? You want more ghosts, man? There's a lot of us. But there's a lot. And, and like every time they walk around the grounds or something, they yeah. a couple more show up. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, listen, there's, there's a lot of people who died um, and are stuck. Um, are you going to get more? Yeah, you are going to get some more. Um, I think the core, like the, the family of us is going to remain. But you will have other people who pop in and live under certain yeah. rules where there's one in particular that is going to be a, a kind of a time sensitive ghost. And uh, you're going to get a lot of fun, a lot of fun things coming up. Do we get your like full backstory? You, what you are really asking are, are you going to find out why I don't have pants on? Yes. That's, what you're really asking. That's exactly okay. what I'm asking. Uh, and you will find out why I don't have pants on. I, you know, I was, uh, I was kind of thinking maybe we should just never do that. <laughs> Maybe like I should be like just about to tell it like every episode or every few episodes like oh Trevor so how did the pants oh okay great and he like goes into this story about like him and Michael Jordan on a yacht and they get on a helicopter and then someone interrupts it yes and then it it's <laughs> and then like six episodes later like someone else like oh pick up on that story oh yeah so Jordan leans over and da -da -da, and then someone else interrupts it and it's just this ongoing thing that happens that would be hilarious but uh you are gonna find out okay okay I can't tell you. We're very curious about it. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's some pretty, that, it's some, some of the work. best um, gags in the show or revolve around you not having pants or you oh, know, yeah. sitting down the wrong way or bending over the wrong way. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much thought goes into, should I, can I leg like this or does it have to be like this or what if i do this and where is the tie where there's a few there's one where in there's an episode where um we're doing a there's like an election over who's going to be in charge you know and uh, i have a i have i'm sitting in a chair where my legs are spread apart and just the tie is covering which is my favorite of all because this is what i do i sit around and think of fun ways to sit and that's my favorite of the ones we've come up with um yeah it's hilarious but it's also cool with him because like it, like I, in many ways, like Tre in many ways, Trevor is kind of repulsive. Like he does a lot of not so good things. Right. Um, that said, he's not wearing any pants. So like while he is someone who would objectify everyone, he is immediately objectified. <laughs> and there's something about that. I, I've always asserted that there's like a puppy element to him. Yeah, because uh, he just wants to have yeah. a good time. He he's tight with his friends, <clears throat> and uh, and he's like harmless. Yeah, he, yeah. All, I think he, all he, all he really is harmless. A little bit of a. Uh. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, but it's it's we love the cast. Your your character was our absolute favorite, oh, and that's what you're saying. So it just cracks me up. I, this this poor guy running around without any pants on it just it it just cracks me up and i keep thinking you know is that what's going to happen if you're if if there really are ghosts and you come back are you just stuck in whatever you pass it makes me think well maybe i need to be dressing a little better yeah i, I just in I, case I, think about, I lose a lot of energy thinking about stuff like that like what it like because we don't know there may no, be a whole know. system this is also like the history of humanity. Like, so what are we going to be judged on? Like, what's the rubric here? Like you're taking a test and the teacher never gave you the materials. 
to study. Uh, so I don't know. I just keep your pants nearby, I guess. Keep your pants nearby. And you got to be careful, you know, about where you're located. Yeah. When I, if I, if, if, when I get older and it's starting to get a little closer, I may have to make sure I'm in a, you know, maybe a beach area or something. Maybe that's a good, yeah. I like that. You know, or, or maybe you want to, it depends. Do you want some variety? Because if you right. want some variety in the seasons, the Hudson Valley is the place to be. That is true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you'd have plenty to do. It's also that's the one thing. The ghosts, they, they, they get, they're getting bored. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and like we, you know, when you think about, is it happening? I'm sorry. Now I'm trying to, ha- no, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. So there's going to be a, a, an episode where, uh, I think I can, can I use this? Where Thor is going to have some things that he's going to have to process and he will undergo a kind of, you know, he's going to have to process some things. And when you consider that dude has been around for a thousand years. That's crazy. That is crazy. Well, and we love that. We love the episode where they did have the episode where it showed where he was kind of the uh, childhood friend to the older woman. Wasn't that sweet? That was, I love that. That was terrific. And, and I remember us being in a place. I remember when that episode came out, we were all thinking, I'm like, I wonder who's going to like pair up with who? Like, what's going to be yeah. the, because we were at the time where like the, the Pete and Alberta thing, like Pete was starting yeah. to have a crush on Alberta. And we were like, oh, so what else is going to happen here? And, and I remember us hearing rumors about like, oh, there might be like a Thor Hetty thing, but we don't know what it is yet. Cause we don't know what's coming out of the writer's room. They're, they're making it up and it comes down the chain and then we get it. And, yeah. and when I read those scenes, I was like, this is brilliant. Because no one is going to see this coming. And it is yeah, so loved it. charming. It is. It was such a great idea. Yeah. I love that. They, that may have been our favorite episode. They were just awesome. so good. Yeah. 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 So, how did the role come about? You know, when you get this role, they're, are they telling you, well, you're playing a ghost with no pants? <laughs> yeah. No, that, that part I know. That part I knew. It was, you know what it was? Um, uh, our, you know, I've auditioned for pilots and, and stuff like that for so long and they never happen. Like no one ever gets these things. Like, so I remember the time I was like, there was like a guest star on, on Blue Bloods or something that I was like really amped up about. And I did this, this pilot audition. I did another pilot audition all on the same day. And my agents were like, will you calm down about this Blue Bloods thing? Like, I, I really <laughs> like you. And I was like, no one gets pilots. No one books those, please. Lo and behold, uh, doing this for 18 years. It took 18 years to get a pilot. And um, uh, and so then you go through this process of like, you, you get it and then you, you, you go through like studio tests and network tests where they kind of select a few people and then you go to the studio, you go to the network and the network and studio kind of knock down people. And then it's like the last man standing kind of thing. Um, and I was in New York for all of mine. Uh, some people were kind of flown uh, back and forth and then, I mean, the real crazy story is like this dream comes true and you're like, I'm making a TV show and it's a TV show I like. It's a script that I love. And you land in LA and you got to do like a table read and get through the table read and hope that no one gets fired when everyone sees the group together. Uh, and you get to the table read and we had just gotten through the table read and we were about to start rehearsing so we could shoot on the following Monday. And then oh. the world shut down oh my gosh. and we were all sent home. Uh, that has to be so, just excruciating because you don't know for sure that you're coming back. You don't know. And I, someone in this was like, yeah, so we're shutting down. Um, you know, we'll, maybe we'll be back in a few weeks. And we we're all yeah. like, no, no, we're not. That's not no. going to happen. Uh, but CBS believed in the show. Uh, it gave us a shot. And I think so what the, we all, it all shut down in mid-March. And then December, we had this little window. We went out to LA and shot the pilot and then kind of sat around waiting and hoping and praying that we would get picked up. And I think it was March 31st, March 31st, 2021. We got picked up and then started shooting in Montreal. And Did you have a party when you heard that it was picked up? Do you, did I have a party? Yeah. <laughs> did you throw a party? When I, no, no. I would have loved to throw a party. That'd be great. But uh, that was not safe. I will tell you that this was, this was kind of sweet. Um, so I, uh, um, I was, 
I was with my family. It was my parents. Uh, the weekend, so there was, there, we were knew we were going to find out. Like the way it works is, there's a they hold you for a certain date, and if they decide to make the show, they're going to tell you before that date. And if you don't hear anything before that date, this ain't happening. Um, so you're just kind of like checking your phone constantly, like, oh, come on. And the last, the, the final day that March 31st rolled around, and uh, we still hadn't heard anything. And I had been with my parents, I think it was Passover. So I was home uh, with my parents for a few days. And, and, uh, and Richie, who plays Pete, is the other yeah. coaster. And so he called me and said, do you want to you wanna come over to my house and have like breakfast in the morning of March 31st? And we can just kind of like huddle in a corner and, and, and you know, oh. hold each other. Um, and I was like, yes, that sounds like exactly what I want to do. Um, <laughs> so I drove out to him. And I was sitting there with him and I was like, man, I don't know what to do. Cause like, if we get this news today and it's good news, like I would love to be with my parents because they've never had good news in terms of my acting career. <laughs> um, but then I was like, but if this is bad news, the last place I want to be is with my parents. Yes. And, yes. and I was like, so I don't know, what do I do? Do I go home to New York or do I go visit my parents? And Richie was like, go see your parents. I think this is going to happen. Go see your parents. And I was like, all right, you're right. You're right. I got in the car. I started heading out to my parents. It started raining. I got there. I had been there over the weekend and my, I, I grew up on a farm. So there's, uh, and there's a lot of animals and there's, we got dogs and everything running around. My mom over the weekend had been like clean up all the dog shit. And I got <laughs> home and I, and I got there and, and I hadn't done it. And so when I got home with this like, triumphant, like I'm going to spend the day with you guys. She was like, pick up the dog shit. And then it started raining. <laughs> So it was like this high of feeling momentum to now I'm walking around the house with a pooper scooper, picking up dog shit, putting it in a paper bag. My dad walks out of the house. I think he just felt bad for me. And, and we sat outside in the rain, like open the phone would call. Oh, the phone would ring and it never rang. And uh, eventually like seven, eight o'clock at night rolled around. My dad was like, do you want to watch SNL reruns? <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> no, I give up. I'm going back to New York, going back home got in my car, headed back to New York. And I was about halfway there when our director texted me a little champagne emoji. And I was looking at my phone because I was addicted to it because we had been waiting. And I was like, wait, is that real? Is that what, is that real? And he was like, you haven't heard anything? I said, no. And he said, you never, you never heard from me. Just, Phew. and then like 30 seconds later, Joe Port, one of our creators called me screaming and I started screaming and I turned the car around Amazing. back out to my parents still raining my parents came out of the house and there was like a jumping leaping thing even the puppy was involved um and then we just sat on the floor in like a stunned silence for like two hours like is this real is this happening amazing i love that so much because you always hear of the struggle oh yeah acting, but you don't oh, hear yeah. these type of stories the you know the triumphs and the the good days and yeah it it's i mean I wouldn't trade anything for it. And and then the weird thing, all of the struggles, all like the 18 years of, you know, this very small paychecks and a lot of unemployment and stuff like that. <laughs> it makes the moments like that mean so much more because it wasn't like uh, you didn't like just step in and it all fit. It's like you had to reinvent yourself multiple times and figure out. Hey, you had to work at it. You had to work at it. And, and the direct relationship with like you put work in and you get work out that happens in most careers doesn't happen in an acting career. Like you can be great and yeah. just, you don't fit in a story. And you just, it's like, you're, I got a lot of respect for you. You're great, but like, I don't have anything for you. Yeah. And um, so it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of, um, yeah, it's funny. Like everyone in the cast, even now, they're not only acting. We're writing or we're directing or we're doing other stuff because nowadays that's what it takes. Yeah, you almost have to. There's a, yeah. there's a very few that can just do, you know, one job. Yeah, I, I teach at a college in New York. I teach acting and, uh, very and nice. it's something that I'm telling my students all the time, which is like, I know you all want jobs and everything like that. And I wish I could tell you how to, how to do that and how to just get one. But like, you also have like a camera right here. And you can make whatever you want, whenever you want. And some of the coolest stuff I've seen is films people, uh, people made on their phones or just made with their friends and put together. Um, yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And the younger, the younger they are, the better they are. At that stuff. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And now they're like, like TikTok is basically all, it's just all, it's just every, everything's a film. Everyone's putting it out there. Maybe the script was written for you and you're putting like a, you're like putting pictures to a sound, which yeah. is the thing. And I probably sound like I'm, my generation is done. I'm like putting pictures to a sound. Who, who is this guy? He doesn't know what TikTok is. Um, and, uh, but you're, you're already doing it. You know, you're already making it. So yeah, it's not, that's, that's mystery is not, um, yeah. I mean, you're doing it too. Look what you're doing. Well, if you knew me, this is an accomplishment. Because <laughs> I'm not techie at all. Okay. <laughs> well, but I don't really have to do anything, son, though. Son, just show yeah. yeah, he does all of it. He's techie. And what is he? What? So he's in college. What is he studying? He's in film school. Oh, he is in film. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so, yeah, he's, so he's, he's made his, you know, he had his, he's a junior this year, but he had his class assignment a year or so ago where he had to make the short film, right? Uh, but yeah, you yeah. couldn't do it with, it had, it had to be uh, no sound. I think, oh, yeah. Was, yeah, it's no sound. So it was not easy to do, you know, I mean, it's easier in some ways, but to have a decent story, a little bit different. I too. love those. And I remember being in film school and like those assignments that you get where it like every assignment is taking one of your hands and tying it behind your back. <laughs> like you can make a movie, but I don't want to hear anything. Great. You can make a movie, but you get one shot. Like it's all yeah. one shot. You make a movie and it's uh it's got to be three edits and you can't have any more than that. It's like, oh my God, every I guess it's every teaching time you they're like doing something to me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I guess it teaches you that way though. I guess so. And it's great. I mean, like in two years, I'm gonna be like begging your son for a job. Yeah. Like, I, 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 it's, I mean, I'm you know a biased dad, but the story, so this is the story. It's it's a group of friends and they got together to build a shelf and somehow the one friend ends up attached to the shelf they put <laughs> it together it's attached to him Great. and they can't figure out how to get him unattached and so he just has to learn to live life as a shelf i love it right and it's so the, so the very last i thought it was it, hilarious but the very last scene it's the one friend coming home and it shows he's walking into the house and he just, you know, he's going into the kitchen. He just tosses his keys over onto a, onto a shelf and it's just his buddy standing there. <laughs> and the keys just bounce off of him. And he's just there for eternity. He's just there. He's a shelf. That's, he, that's basically being a ghost. He's there. He can't move. That's his life yes. now. That's his life. You're stuck learned, I love that. Yeah, that's great. Funny. The the um the Safety brothers made a short film that was about leaving a uh, an a making the answering machine message. Like it's that <laughs> little stuff, and they won Sundance. It's that little stuff. Like everyone's like, wow, how am I gonna come up with the next great film or something like that? And these guys are like, let's leave a let's leave a message on an answering machine, and it's brilliant. That's that's awesome. Did you get to go? Did you get to take your your film to Sundance? No, not the Sundance. That'd be great. Yeah. I would have loved that. Sundance is like, like when you look at the number, that, that's probably the, the, when we were submitting, the train is the short film, the one with Eli. When we were submitting that, I think the numbers were something like 8,000 short films were submitted to Sundance and they took like 12. Like that, that's insane. Uh, so no, we didn't go there, but we went a lot of great places. Um, Cleveland was amazing. Sedona was amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, we go, uh, Vancouver. Um, I'm forgetting a bunch of them now, but good. a lot of fun. Yeah, we went to a bunch. It was, I mean, it's a great experience because you're, it's like you spend, it, it's, it's a lot like acting because you spend all that time like submitting and try, or trying to get in. And then you get in and everyone's like, man, that was so hard to get here. Jeez. And everyone is like relying on each other, like, yeah, you too. Oh my God. So yeah. hard. And, uh, you know, there's kind of neat because then you just share experiences. Yeah, for sure. And you, you know, you meet Ed Asner, who's still like, yeah, it was hard to get here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I he had. I mean, if you go to IMBD, it would take you an wow. hour to read through everything. My, I was, I was, uh, some of my parents a few days ago. My mom was like, um because she's having the same thing you are. She's like, I can't find anything funny to watch on television. So she 
she was watching a rerun of Columbo. That's how far back she went. And she was like, you know that Steven Spielberg directed an episode of Columbo? And I was like, no, he didn't. And then I had to go through Steven Spielberg's IMDb, which is, is like on there? 45 pages. And it is on yeah. there. And like 1971, he directed an episode of Columbo. Hilarious. We uh we got to go to to Sundance in 2019. We don't oh, want to, really? just just for networking stuff. We weren't it didn't okay. have to submitted. And, and what what is your review? What do you think? It's well, it's definitely worth going. Yeah. It's, you know, I had we had no clue, you know, what we were doing. We bounced around from different parties, and we saw certain everything we saw was terrific, but it was very random. You know, there was because it's very difficult to get tickets to anything. I've heard that. You know, so, and and everybody, it's so cold. It's it just it's so cold there, and everybody is so bundled up. I mean, you're walking past people that you know are oh, celebrities, yeah. but you can't you can't tell who it is. Yeah, yeah. That we had the same <laughs> thing, and uh, we had the same thing in like uh, um, in Montreal shooting. Is it got so cold? And we had other people like shooting in our studio. I think like Joaquin Phoenix was there for a little bit, and. Other people were there, and like you could be like walk, stand next to these people for an hour, and you have no idea who they are. You have no idea. But yeah, they're, they're all in uh, parkas, you know, with the yeah. hoods all. All you can see is a little bit of nose, and that's it. And and now, <laughs> you know, with the masks, I have no oh, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. There's there's no way. There's no way. So, do you have plans mm. to like if if I had this role where I was playing a ghost that didn't have pants, I would be using that costume for everything. Every Halloween till I died, I would be wearing just, you know, suit. No yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. But I will say that one of the coolest things that uh, I don't think anyone wants to see an actor come to a Halloween costume dressed as in his. In his well, I was going to ask if you if you planned on you know going to feeling it to school and going to school and showing up like that, and I was like, ah, there's no way he's not doing that. I, I think I get fired. Yeah, pretty, that's probably the answer to that. Um, but I did have, I had friends uh, dress up as Trevor for the uh, um, the premiere oh, of the show, which is really cool. And amazing. I tried to do a thing um, around Halloween to get people to dress up as um, as Trevor and send pictures of them to Brandon Scott Jones, who plays uh, <laughs> Isaac, just for fun, just to inundate his phone with uh, pictures of um, pantless men. Uh, didn't quite catch on the way I was hoping it would, but... That's hilarious. So, so the other show I told you we we binged. Yes. Oh Ghost, yeah. What's the other one? Uh, uh, a ghost on uh, it's on uh, over Christmas break. So the oh. other show I, I'll get it out eventually. The other show that we binged that we were way behind on was Succession. Oh yeah. You you made an appearance on that. <laughs> yes. We're I like, hey, appearance. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because in New York, uh, no one has seen ghosts, or at least no one who I know has seen ghosts. So I'm still like getting messages from people like, "Are you are you Brad Fucker Sam?" And <laughs> and that's still, and and it's it's you know that's that's what I'll be known as is Brad Fucker Sam, which is it's that was a funky thing because like all I had to do was like show up because there's no um, like the 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 role is literally the fact that he exists. He just has to be there. And the rest of that ensemble is amazing because like you just put like one dude in there that people are afraid of. And then it trickles through this, like Tom and Greg are doing a thing. And then the other people are doing it. Like it's, that show is so brilliant. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, we're all caught up now. This last, really. last season was amazing. I don't know if we can, like, I don't know if we can, can we talk about like? I don't know. I mean, it was crazy. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoilers. Um, <laughs> There's a, I, I'll tell you one thing. I was like, I, I was like, I knew, I, I knew Tom was going to be up to something. Like I knew it had to be Tom. It had yeah, to be yeah. Tom who was going to do that thing. And that scene between Tom and Shiv, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. I They're do. I do. And they had, they've had several good scenes. Ooh. That one. That was like devastating. Yeah. I, I, I think I shot up out of my, off the couch and i was like no what <laughs> it was amazing yeah it's, it's so good that, that show is just incredible and those moments where and this is what i really like um where i just don't know what you're gonna do next 
you know, and that show is so good. There's a, there's this shot in Mad Men that I've never forgotten. Where did you ever see Mad Men? I did. Yeah. There's a when he's uh, um, he's like been kicked out, and he comes back accidentally through miscommunication. He like thinks he's allowed back at the office. Right. And, yeah. And they realize, oh shit, we screwed this up. So they have this like board meeting at the end of the episode. And they've like come up with this like deal to like let him be involved, but it's the shittiest deal in the world. And it's almost a deal made for him to say no. And the camera sits on him and you watch John Hamm's face and you're like, oh, he's going to say yes. Oh, no, he's going to say no. Oh, he just thought about saying yes. No, he's going to say no. no. <laughs> oh, I, and you watch him like change his mind like three times and you just have no idea what he's going to do until the very last second. And it's like, that's just the best storytelling. Yeah. It's really good. And yeah, so there's not enough shows like it's really hard to do. It's really hard to do. And that's Succession Crew. I mean, Jesse Armstrong is brilliant. Who's the creator? Yeah, you're going to have a tough one with that because, you know, it shows on HBO and it's good. You know, oh, it's, it's like nice. Sopranos good. So yeah. it's going to be watched for a while. <laughs> you mean being known as, as Radfucker Sam? Yeah. 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 Well, maybe Radfucker Sam will have more. Uh, some life in the future. I don't know. We'll see. They, yeah, they um, need to bring him back. I don't know. I, I, it's been like a. I was hoping that it would. Where they, there's been a few times where there's been like increase and in, and in stuff. But I think that I don't know. We'll, we'll see how the schedule schedule turns out. But I would love that. I I'm putting it out there. That, we want a spinoff. Put it out. <laughs> God, the rat fucker Sam spinoff. <laughs> Ooh, that's. Great idea, short-lived idea, but fun what idea. What would you call that? I think, your son, I think your son should direct it. Oh, he'd be in for that. Great. So what would you call it? Um, yeah, you'd have to have a... <laughs> the Rat House. The rat Something house. like that. Sewage. You call it sewage. <laughs> I Some... know my son, though. He's never seen the show. Succession? But he would to yeah, he's never seen it, but he would totally want to direct the spinoff just <laughs> and and but never go back to watch the actual show Wait, so, so the great that's and that's the best i i know he would no I just, intention I go your own route i'm down for that so what is what is he into what is your son like like what well, is this so like? so so when when we started uh meistercon that was okay. eight years ago and we we're just looking i i would when I was growing up, I owned a uh, couple of comic book stores. So I'm geek. Okay. Yeah. You know, sure. and then and then Marvel goes bankrupt in like 96. And I was like, it's over. So I so I, you know, I got out of the business. And of course, you know, like you know what yeah. happened. But but so we were he's into the same stuff I was into. He's into okay, comic right. books, he's into, you know, just nerdy stuff. So we were looking for a way to to kind of connect. So we started up just a Facebook page. I was eight years ago. And then, then a couple of years ago, he wanted to podcast and none of his friends would, you know, would do it with him. They might, they were like, well, we'll do it once, but he wanted to make uh -huh. it a thing. So he asked me and I was like, heck yes, because I wanted to spend the, the time with him. Uh -huh. And then, you know, three years later and 350 episodes, we're, we're still going. I, I love that you're still going. And he's like, you just do it yourself, dad. Yeah. Just, just do it yourself. He tried um, it for about a year, and he was like, "I'm just going to do the behind the camera stuff," which is actually the harder stuff. So, so first of all, that's amazing to be able to do something with your son. I just think that's yeah. the coolest thing ever. Uh, I'm curious, as someone who is a, I'm like a mainstream comic book fan. Like, I'm obsessed yeah. with Batman. The the oh, other yeah. one, the Marvel stuff I've gotten into because I've seen the thing. Who is the? You know, actually, and the best thing was um, the the Netflix Daredevil. I thought oh, that was so good. I was so glad that they brought him back. I'm so glad they brought him back. And those, those like that, there's two of them, but like uh, that one take of him fighting, there's one where he's like drugged in like season two. Yes. Or three. Like he's yes. going to pass out. And it's like how far he's going to make. And there's another one, I think in season one is that's amazing. But my question for you is, so who is the, what is the comic, the comic book hero character, whatever, who needs a movie, but doesn't have one yet? It's a really good question because we talk about that one. stuff. We talk about that stuff all the time, you okay. know, but Marvel's actually done a really good job of starting to, I mean, they're getting some pretty obscure people that they're bringing yeah. to, to the, to the screen. Cause Moon Knight would have been one that we would have said, 
Okay. That's that's coming on TV. All right. And then, you know, there's there's for DC, we were always uh fans of the question. I don't know if you've ever heard of the question. Oh. So the question, he's like a like a he's kind of like a 1950s gumshoe detective, but his mask is just a mask that looks like he has no face. So he just oh, it's like like Rorschach a little bit. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, kind of like Got that. It. Yeah, right. it's kind of like uh, 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 him before him. You know, him before Watchmen. But right. so, so, so Rorschach met Columbo. There you go. That it. Ah, oh, look at that. He's I done a great. He, we could. Oh, we should do that. <laughs> but he's That's got a really great story because in the comics, over time, he eventually gets um, cancer and he's he's dying of cancer. He's still fighting crime and he he becomes friends with this uh, police woman. And eventually he goes missing, you know, and she's like, did he die? Did something happen to him when he's out fighting crime? And she ends up becoming the new question. Ah. I was like, that's a that's a movie or a TV show. Plus, the 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 new question is Renee uh, Montoya, who is, you know, she shows up in Gotham all the time. She's on a lot of the oh, Batman good. stuff. She's on. They got a Renee Montoya on that new uh, Batwoman show. I'm like, it's no, right I there. never saw the I never saw the Batman the the Gotham or Batwoman shows. I probably should. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're both pretty good. I uh, Gotham especially is. Yeah, excellent. I know Gotham has had some great, uh, great stuff. I never, I never got over losing Michael Keaton. I just, I thought he's, he you know, he's back. coming back. He's going I know, I know. I'm, I'm watching that. I can't wait. I'm can't very. Wait. So, do you have one as a as a casual fan? Do you have somebody that you would want to see on screen that? Oh, um, that they haven't done yet. I don't know that I know enough, but I, let me think, um, you know, it would kind of be fun that I'd be curious about, um, because like my brother and I got really into it as kids yeah. that when they made the phantom movie with Billy Zane, yeah. Billy Zane. Yeah. And I watched it recently, not too recently, but I was like, Oh, this is interesting. And I, and, and I have some questions about like how it all works. The film is actually kind of pretty entertaining and Billy Zane's also like, everyone's great. Um, the bad guy's really good too. Um, it's a, oh God, Prince of the City. Um, Trent Williams, uh, Treat, Treat, Treat Williams. Treat Williams. Treat Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I Treat Williams. but I'd be curious about like how that would play today, but that doesn't really count because it existed. So it does, but it does need a remake because it was like this uh, newspaper strip, I think is what that is. Is that what it was? Or, you know what actually was amazing? And, and I, and I read this whole article about it was um, the Rocketeer. They need to redo the Rocketeer. And the Rocketeer is so good. That movie yeah. is great. Oh, I love it. it. It's Tim Dalton, right? Tim Dalton's yeah. the Rocketeer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it, but it never really did very well. Yeah, I, that's what I. And it was a Disney movie, if I remember right. I don't remember. Uh -huh. I don't remember who produced it. I guess if I, I go on Disney and it's on their channel, then I know. Yeah, and it's um, but yeah, it was a really good underrated movie. Underrated movie. Jennifer Connelly was in it, right? Yeah, she was a love right. interest, in the, and again, the bad guy's great. Um, the guy who plays the Rocketeer is great, I and mean, they're all that. It was such a good movie. And so we got to do a Rocketeer. We got to do a Rocketeer movie. There we go. I we we got some work to do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you got to get your son to pull him out of school. There's too much to do. Degree's not worth it. Let's just go. Let's just go. I'll just yeah. go. <laughs> well, Asher, thank you so much. This has just been the best. I, I really oh my I, I knew it was going to be a fun interview. I, I'm so happy you decided to do it. It's a blast for me. This is, uh, um, you know, the the uh, we're like coming back into the real world now, and everything is yeah. is warped with with COVID and everything. So, um, you're <laughs> this is like more human interaction than I've had in a very long time. So, I'm enjoying this way more uh, than is than I probably should. But I'm having a blast. Oh, I'm in great. desperate need of human connection. Yeah, that's terrific. I, the one thing I, I've, I've told a few people this, and I would give it up. If, if we could just go back to normal, I'd give it up. But last year was actually really good for podcasting. Oh, yes. Everybody was home. So it's yeah. like everybody we contacted, they were like, yeah, we'll do it. We don't have nothing else going on. So it was yeah, good for us. Get, 
they're great and you get so engrossed i can't go for a run without listening to one like i just yeah me either i need it so i mean for me this is a blast i can't wait <laughs> well thank you thank you right. so so much um before you go yes uh, outside of the rest of the episodes of ghosts mm -hmm. and, and you have to come back when season two gets ready to come out i, pr I promise i will yeah but outside of that is there anything else that you're working on that we can kind of keep an eye out for um uh not not right now um I mean, maybe but, uh, a few things. I gave you, you know, we gave each other some ideas. So maybe. Well, I'm going to start writing the Rocketeer script right now. Uh, so that, that's that's what's next for me. Um, not not right now. Uh, it's 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 all basically Ghost World at the moment, and it's also a weird time because like the, there was a pandemic and like there was nothing to do, and and it was just this job to see if this thing was going to make it, and we made it. So as the world slowly comes back into into reality, I'm sure or, or reality, no normalcy, um, I'm sure there'll be stuff, but uh, something to look forward. Uh, maybe it'll be a reveal next time I'm on. Yeah, You're, yeah that's right. So. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, yeah. Rose was in a comic book show. You know, I which, zombie was I zombie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, was and, and I this is I think this is a I know we, we probably need to end, but I, I do need to say this. Um, Rose is amazing. Yeah. She is I awesome. love Rose. She's so good. And also, like what she does in this show, like, because we 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 do everything twice, right? So we do the yeah. scene and then we do the ghostless pass. Yeah. Right. So she does <laughs> a scene with us with eight people in the room. And then we're all gone. And she does the same scene without any of us as though we're all still there. So she's talking to eight imaginary people. And it's usually a thing where like, we're there, but like, I'm here, but you have to pretend that I'm here and you have to look here and right. you have to remember not to follow my voice, but to follow the eye line. And she can do it times eight and do it in one take. Amazing. I mean, she is remarkable. And then on the flip side, Utkarsh can do, can be in a scene with eight of us and not listen to seven of us. And that's also, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, that that would be really difficult. And it's so well done. Like, it cracks us up every time when, you know, you're so one person's talking, there's nobody there. And yeah. then they flip back and they're, you know, you guys are standing there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really well. But that it comes down to Rose's ability to do, because she's so good to do. Like, without her and without, without what Ukarsh is doing, we, we don't have a show. So like we can all be bouncing off the walls right. whatever we want. Well, it could be it could it could be ridiculous. Yeah, not in yes. a good way if you didn't have the right people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They're the spine for the whole thing. So and I, I I think I had heard that it's based on an English show. Is that right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's based on a on a BBC show, and so the concept is theirs. Um, and the great thing about the concept is that it you could do the show anywhere like you could you, you yeah. could do one in 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 egypt you could do one in in moscow you could yeah it's all based on the history of wherever you are so when the joes were writing the show joe port and joe wiseman are creators when they were writing the show they were like all right so where in the continental united states do we have a history and a place where we have the most eclectic group of people and they found out that vikings made it to upstate new york and they're like done <laughs> that's there where we go that's Let's where do we're it. going yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I gotta look up that older show. It's great. No, it's they're still on. They're they're I mean, they're our bosses. So we're one of one of our mini bosses. Oh, so really? They're amazing. Yeah, very much. I gotta look that up. Watched. They are. Have awesome. you have you have you watched some of them? I have now watched it. I avoided it because I was intimidated. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't want to just copy what they did. So is it is it good? Is it funny? Yeah, yeah it's great. It's All really right. good. I gotta check it out. Gotta Highly check recommend. It. Well, so the last thing, uh, actually, That's before you go. Where can we find you on social media? Oh, um, you know, the nice thing about being a guy named Asher Grodman is you're just at Asher Grodman. There's, there's no more of them. So um, at Asher yes, Grodman yes. is uh, Instagram and, and Twitter. Um, I think I, I, I just uh, dipped dip my toe in a TikTok, but I, the, the Instagram and Twitter is where we I, I'm really impressed awesome. with that. I'm on TikTok, but only to follow my son. He's, he's like my only. Oh, there you person. go. And what, what is your son's handle? So, oh, well, that's a good question. Let's do a little so His name is Brett Wall. Okay. And I think that's that's what it shows up. It's just, it's just. Brett Wall. Really? Wow. I he has, so. of all the Brett Walls in the world. I think he's, I think he's got it. Because, because wow. 
you know, I was like, well, we're going to go with MeisterCon because I guarantee nobody else will have that thing. No. And I was right. Nobody else is. Uh, <laughs> it's not always easy explaining, you know, what we are. You know, people see that and they're like, what? <laughs> they don't have to. They don't have to understand. They just have to follow. That's, That's it. Right. That's well, it. we started. So the podcast is called Two Opinionated. Uh-huh. And our I thought that. was, you know, it's uh, generational. And uh-huh. we would have different opinions. And we would kind of argue on the podcast about different nerdy things that's how we started and then yeah. it turned out that we actually share mostly the same yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> it's not really that opinionated at all <laughs> can i ask you one question before i before i yeah, leave of course or uh because I'm, I'm sure you have other things to do more important than talking to me what no is the it's a, this is the highlight of my well okay that's good not, good that's not so true both- i was going to say this is the highlight of my day but i got to spend the whole day oh here we go watching and babysitting my four grandkids Oh, I mean, that's... So, but, but, but other than that, other like... than that, yeah, great. <laughs> I, I, I am honored to have second place. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's a high second. Though. I mean, so, it was close. <laughs> it's uh, they, they, they deserve to win. I I'm just grateful that it's not fifth place. Cause technically there's four grandkids. So that's, that is true. That is Thank true. you. I, I, I grouped them together to help out the numbers. Um, who would be, this is from my edification. Who would be the worst comic book character? to get a movie ambush bug okay who is ambush bug oh he's a terrible he's a dc character and uh-huh. he's like um well he looks like a bug okay and well, he's a pretty good like movie. A, he's like a stand-up comic but really really bad maybe he'd be good <laughs> Hey, I, the more you talk about this the better it sounds you gotta look him up because whenever he was he's kind of like He's kind of like Deadpool, okay. but way worse. Like you, you know, you watch Deadpool and it's funny and it's kind yeah, of, yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's out there a little bit. He's doing basically the same things, but none of it lands. Okay. So maybe it would be a good. Movie. I think I think this is. <laughs> let's call it. Is that DC? That's DC. All right, DC. ambush bug. I think DC could use a little bit of a little bit of more more some more comedy in there. But I yeah, love now it. that I think about it, it actually bad. would be good. Is it, yeah, is the idea that he's a bad stand-up comic? Like he's a yeah, failed he's just, stand-up comic? He's just bad at everything, right? So, so and his power is something weird. It's like, um, it's like luck-based or something. So when he shows up, bad things happen to like everybody around him, but good things happen to him. You know, he always seems to come out of it fine. Interesting. You know, he's kind of like a bad luck charm for everybody else, but works for him. Ambush bug. Ambush bug. You gotta look okay. at That's my homework assignment. Yeah. I'm gonna come back. Hopefully, season two, I'm gonna come back yeah. and I'm gonna pitch you an ambush bug. You can come back uh, even with no was... season two. We'll just talk about ambush Thank bugs. You. That's great. I love just it. Just give Let's me, I don't need anything, just maybe a special thanks, you know, at the end, special thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I, well, you're producing it because your son's directing it. So. Oh, okay. Well, if he's no. directing, it, you, got, you have to get a lot more than. There you go. Right? If I could, I get. All right, now we're off track, but I'm going to run this by you. Right so, so me. I've got this idea for me to have a career in Hollywood because I can't act. Okay. But what if I was the guy that on every show or movie, I was the first guy to die. <laughs> but no lines. I. I like oh, I, I just uh, refuse. I turned down roles that had speaking parts. I, I'm so only I, the guy. I could be a body or the guy that gets killed right at the beginning, but it has to be like right at the beginning. Otherwise, it's not for me. Great. So you're saying that that's that is because is this like a radio man situation where we just want to get you like the fun yes. is having you like oh well, he's our, this movie and this movie and this great. Okay. And I think call up DC tomorrow and you said I'm just the guy that you know I'm just the I'm the dead guy. I love it. I think I'm I think there's something there. Because yes, yeah, you could get a few people to do it. Other people would be like, we're doing this movie. We gotta have that dead guy in here. I'd be I, like I, an I, Easter egg. Yeah. And who wouldn't like the, it's, that's the greatest ad in the world? Like, come watch me die. You can watch me die 50 ways in 50 different films. Here's the watch me die list of movies. That's it. And, and just like my IMDb page would just be a bunch of stuff that said dead guy. Exactly. Done. 
Like that'd be part. I have to write that in. No, I, no names, no, no names. speaking parts. Uh -huh. You know, nothing. I love it. Do it. Yeah, there you go. Come down. <laughs> well, Asher, thank you so much. This has just been a blast. I, yeah, man. You, uh, you made this fun. Oh, thank you. You made this fun. So I'm down anytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, terrific. Yeah, we have to have you back for sure. I'm All right, hold on one second. So that was Asher Crodman. Loved him. Absolutely loved him. He was he was terrific. Such a such a nice um, guy. You know, and he uh, went above and beyond on the interview. We talked before. We talked after. I mean, we just really had a uh, in enjoyable time. He's he's a talented actor. If you haven't watched Ghost, do yourself a favor, check it out. It's um, it's such a great show, and it's got a lot of people in it that you'll recognize. I think you'll enjoy them in a in a little different role. It's it's really really good. One of the uh, one of the favorite shows that I've watched in the last six months or so. So, so definitely Ghosts. Um, it's on uh, Paramount is where we're watching it. So I guess that would be CBS, I think. I hope I, I, hope I got that right, but I know it's on uh, Paramount is where we're watching it. So definitely check that out, Ghosts. Um, if you have, haven't done so yet, we could use the help with our YouTube channel. So we really appreciate it if you could subscribe. You can also find all 325, 30 episodes, audio and video on our website, meistercon.com. There's a great blog from Brett on there. It's funny. It's geeky. It's oh, he's such a good writer. So definitely check that out. If we're doing anything in studio, if we're doing live interviews on location, if we're covering conventions, that'll be on the website. So definitely, please check that out, meistercon.com. So thank you guys so much. Thanks to uh, Asher, such a good actor. I can't wait to see him in, uh, in more things. So good, so good. Until next time, bye, everybody.